Greetings and welcome to another fantastic tutorial. My name is Dave Bodie, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for AudioTutsPlus.com. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting plugin that I've come across recently called ReControl MIDI. This is kind of a cool plugin because it gives you some control over some different MIDI parameters in a way that sometimes is not always available depending on your DAW. But let me just kind of go through kind of the global features here. We have a MIDI channel. We got a couple of controls here. All notes off. We have a, a log that we can look at. And if I record enable this track, you can see all the MIDI note messages there. It has this bank slash program select. And according to the manual, you can load a .rebank file or a cakewalk.ins file. Then you can have instrument definitions and select a preferred bank slash program combination if you have a particular synth that you need to control in that manner. Down here in the notes portion, we can transpose. So that's an interesting because all of these parameters you can automate with envelopes. Um, we can also set this to snap to a particular scale. But then down here we have some control change options. And this gives you the list of MIDI CC controllers. And you can select these and then you can gain control over them in a slightly different way. Say for example, you wanted to control the modulation wheel. Let's disable this for a second. That's pretty easy to do. Normally, what you can do is just record something. So let me just roll in this project. And you can see what this MIDI track, you see we got a couple of things here. We have the mod wheel data, which is recorded up here, and then we have the velocity data, and then we have the note data up here. And so after you've recorded, say, your notes, say you want to come back in here and re-sculpt this mod wheel data. Now for this particular uh, instrument, I have loaded cinematic strings to and take a look at the violin here. And it has the option to cross fade velocity or velocity cross fade. And so what that does is it, it cross fades different samples from quieter samples like piano, recorded violin samples, all the way up to the louder dynamic samples. And in this way, it gives you kind of a realistic way to control the intensity of a particular instrument. You can do crescendos, which are not just volume crescendos. It also changes the, the timbre of the instrument as it plays louder. You know, it might get warmer or more pointed sounding, dependent on the instrument. And so you can control that with the mod wheel. And, you know, some other instruments may have a different mod wheel control, like an organ may control the speed of the rotator speaker or something like something like that. So you can use different MIDI parameters, obviously, to control either the sampler or the synth or what have you. The problem is that if you wanted to reshape this, it's a little bit annoying to come in here and redraw this. Now, I just redrew that just by clicking and dragging. And that's all fine and good. The problem is if you need to hit a certain point, say you wanted to draw a particular shape, you need this to start kind of soft and then come up like this and then come down like that. Okay, so we've drawn that just fine. And, but let's say, oh, that's this part up here. That's just a little bit too loud. We, we need to uh, make that a little bit smaller. Well, we can click and drag, but look, we, we kind of have to reshape this line and that can get very tedious. And there's not a great way to come in here and smooth this out. You can see if we zoom in here, there's all kinds of little tiny bumps and stuff 
because the, the resolution in kind of drawing these is just not that great. So what I found is when I've had to come in here and redraw in mod wheel data elements here, it's a huge pain because it just becomes a nightmare trying to get your crescendo just right by drawing and you end up with these little ridges and bumps and, and all kinds of nasty things. So the advantage of ReControl MIDI is that it gives you a better way to control this. So let's get in here and we will delete this. We'll hold Alt. Okay, so now there's no mod wheel data and so there's not going to be any volume. But what we can come in here and do is we will click on the track envelope slash automation and we'll look under re-control MIDI. Actually, first we need to go in here and we'll set one of these. Let's say we don't really need volume, but we can control mod wheel. Perfect. Now, when we go back here, Look at that, mod wheels listed. And now what we can do is we can draw pretty little envelopes. So let's select all of these. We can say set default point shape to Bezier, maybe. And then we'll come in here and select Bezier for the ones that we've already drawn. And now, I don't know where that one came from there. It's weird. Now we can come in and we can get a little bit nicer. I mean, look at that. That's That may be the shape that we're looking for right there. And you can see how quick that was to come in here and just kind of modify these Bezier curves. <laughs> That's why it wasn't working. It's because it was not enabled. So maybe we, maybe we want that to, to come down there. Maybe crescendo right here. And you can see immediately we can make really quick changes. and really dial this in, especially if we take off snap here with snapping to the grid. And, and now we can come in here and really get some, some nice resolution. Maybe we want that just like this. And maybe we want this to start here. I'll get out of there. We don't want that one. We want this to start from almost nothing. Maybe we'll just pull it up a hair. Let me start that one a little lower. Probably don't need that one. Probably don't need that one. Good. And you can see how that really gets you a lot of power. Uh, should we change that to the slow star? Or we can just drag another one here. And, ooh, no, that's not what we want. We don't want slow star. We want Bezier. There we go. There we go. That's what we wanted. And so you can see this gives you a lot of power. Now, we can also come in here. Let's take a look at this uh, plugin again. We can use other MIDI CC information here. So we can turn on vibrato control. And we can jump back here to re-control MIDI. And we can select from the next dropdown, breath. CC2 is breath control. So now we can enable that. And now that that's enabled, we can take that off there. We can come in here and we can select it right here. And so now we have an envelope for the vibrato, which is pretty cool. And we'll do the same thing here. I'll set the default to Bezier, and we'll set this to Bezier too. There we go. Cool. So now we can draw another little envelope in here and have it control the vibrato. So let's check that out here. And while we're at it, maybe we'll 
extend that note out. Oh, not that note. This note out just a little bit. And maybe we'll add one more down here. And get rid of that one. Something like that, maybe. So we want to come up to full vibrato here. Have the vibrato slow down towards the end of this. No, nope, maybe we'll just delete this one. Over here. Like this, maybe. Like that. Good. And then we'll do the same thing maybe here. Something like this. These are set to Bezier. This is some... Unfortunately, we don't have Bezier handles, but we can kind of get there, I guess. There we go. And you can hear right at the end of there. We kind of fade into that. We come out of that vibrato into the into the straight tone there. So, so check this out. We're looking at another little project and you can see I've titled it Lost Project. <laughs> it's not a lost project, but this is a little project that I was working on trying to emulate some of the more sensitive strings in some of the original music to the TV series Lost. Now, it's not my goal in life to try and recreate different music from various TV shows, but when I got cinematic strings, I thought I would put it to the test and see if I can recreate some of the more delicate string swells in some of the original music to the television show Lost, which I think is probably one of the best television series in the history of all television. And I'm sure there's someone out there who will agree with me, despite what you think of the ending. Anyway, what you can see here in my composition is that I have very similar to what we just looked at. I have cinematic strings set up and I have some MIDI tracks. And then down here I have the audio playback tracks. And in each one of the MIDI tracks, I have a recontrol MIDI. And I have that using the mod wheel and the breath controller or CC2, which is set to the vibrato control. And then in each one of these, I have a little automation envelope here for the vibrato and they're all set similarly but doing this with these envelopes was so much faster than trying to do it without the envelopes um, actually if you if you remember looking at the uh, spy tutorial uh, one that i produced just recently creating some of the music from the tv show chuck i did a lot of that mod wheel tweaking manually before i kind of discovered the re control midi plugin so Never again will I go about doing that. But I wanted to play you this so you can hear how it sounded and also take a look at how this can be used with a good amount of finesse. Now, this is not my composition. I want to give credit where credit's due. This was done by the composer for all the Lost music, which is Michael Giacchino. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name. Let me play it down for you. Check it out. This little section here is, is uh, well, it's not quite done yet. <laughs> Let me play you this last section as well. Uh, and you can see here from my project that over the course of several measures, I have these strings kind of build up to full intensity. And doing that, kind of drawing that in the MIDI lane there would have been a huge pain. And also being able to kind of visually see it like this, once you have the, the notes in there, going back and adjusting the mod wheel velocity data, as well as the vibrato control is a lot easier in this way, kind of looking at it globally once you have the notes inputted, rather than jumping into each MIDI clip and, you know, kind of drawing it in that way. So check out this end section and uh, just kind of listen to how the strings kind of build up there at the end. There's a lot of dynamic stuff going on in there and uh, re-control MIDI definitely helped to make that a lot easier. 
and I have that loaded in on every one of these uh, MIDI string channels that I was using. I want to show you another project that I'm working on, and I'm starting to work on this little project for another upcoming tutorial, and that tutorial is how to use a hardware fader controller to do some different things and help your workflow and just some kind of interesting ways to use it. Um, so, what I have going on here is I have a template that I've set up that I, that I use for kind of quickly inserting groups of instruments into projects. And so I loaded up my template and the idea here was to see if I can set up the, this uh, Korg Nano Control 2 to be able to control multiple instruments that are armed for recording at the same time to maybe use in a live performance environment. So what I've done here with ReControl MIDI is I've inserted it uh, eight times on the main plugin track. And let me show you how I have this uh, configured here. I have eight MIDI tracks and each one of these MIDI tracks has the input from the Omni or all. So uh, basically any MIDI input is gonna get routed to uh, one of these particular outputs. So this is track seven. So the MIDI input of my keyboard is gonna get routed to track seven. And if we look here, track one, the MIDI input from my keyboard is gonna get routed to track one and so on and so forth. So that's set up there. And then I have eight return channels here. So the main plugin lives up here. And what I've done is I've inserted eight ReControl MIDI plugins up here. I've set each one of these to a different channel. Then I have taken one of the parameters and used the learn function to program it to my hardware controller. And I'll get into this more later, but this kind of shows you some of the power that you can do with re-MIDI control. We can stack multiple plugins to do different things. Like for instance, this only has five available control change pull downs here that we can modify. But if you needed more than that for whatever reason, you could just pop another one on the channel and click enable and set them to five different ones and do that, you know, essentially to your heart's content. Or you can do more creative routing, which I've done here. How I have this set up is I have this little Korg Nano Control 2, and uh, we'll get into more about kind of setting this up in an upcoming in an upcoming tutorial. But you can see I am mixing the faders here, and I can control multiple instruments at the same time using these faders and using MIDI control to be able to control it. So um, the idea here was to kind of experiment and see what you could do in you know a live performance type environment. So what I have loaded up here is the grand piano. And then what I can do when I'm playing, because I have it kind of set up this way, is on my little fader controller, I can switch to an upright piano and back to the grand piano. Maybe get some strings in there. Mix those down a little bit. And you know, I have just a really kind of interesting way to control it. I have a couple pads and leads in here. To be able to use re-MIDI control to really get an interesting setup going here. So you can use this in a live performance environment. 